the highest uh, black elected official in the Commonwealth was, I believe, the district attorney of Suffolk County. Now we have our first African-American governor, our second African-American senator. Can you reflect on the extent to which that's been a goal of both of you? I'd like to hear from both of you on this and what you see as the significance of it to the broader community. Well, John, to the extent you asked whether um, uh, having a black governor was a goal of mine, yeah. <laughs> I guess it kind of goes with the package. <laughs> Uh, I mean, but the, the fact is, I mean, we talked about this, I think, a little bit uh, uh, last night, that the, um, that, uh, the Commonwealth and the country is changing. The, the, uh, um, the breadth of, uh, of diversity of background and ethnicity and, and, uh, uh, and race is deeper and broader than, uh, than ever. And I have known for a long time and have believed for a long time that there is talent in every community in the, uh, in the Commonwealth, and to the extent that we can uh, reflect that um, and encourage, uh, uh, you know, little boys and girls of, uh, uh, of color or who are poor or who come, who, f who grew up in, if you will, marginalized circumstances, to imagine what it might be like to uh, to serve the public in these ways, and I think that's a great. Thing. Can you add to that, Senator? Uh, you've spent, been very active in the private sector in promoting people of color as well, right? Well, I think I would fairly characterized as being active in promoting the notion of uh, equal opportunity for everyone. Uh, listen, I came to Massachusetts uh, 22 years ago for an opportunity, and every day I've been in Massachusetts, I've had an opportunity to grow personally, professionally. I met my wife here, uh, you know, we have a family, we built a home here. Massachusetts is a commonwealth of opportunity for everyone, and that's what I've been busy promoting to the extent I promote everything. I think it's I'm proud to be standing before you today as uh, to follow in Senator Brooks' footsteps. Uh, but I uh, suspect that the reason I'm standing here is not because of, I'm a person of color, an African American. Um, I believe, as, as the governor's indicated, he's got confidence that I will do the job he's sending me to do. Um, I will tell you, you, know, you heard me talk about my mother. Another one of her sayings that keeps me all the time is, you know, no matter where you are, where you're going, um, just understand. Uh, you're, not, you're, you're better than no one, but you can be everyone's equal. And that's the way I approach this, and I intend to approach this work. Senator, Senator you had said um, about a month ago you were looking at going back to the private sector. But you've been kind of hanging around, and we've seen you, you know, at, at the new governor's announcement. So, so when you say you just found out about this yesterday, I mean, you, were you, have you been hanging around because you <laughs> 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 Wishing and hoping? No. Um, no, I... Uh, but I mean, what changed? Because you did say you wanted to go back into the private sector. Yes, and I will, uh, probably around June 26th. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, I indicated I plan to leave state service, return to the private sector. You guys saw the stories. You know my rationale and reasoning for that in the front row here. Um, and uh, that's what I intended to do. But listen, I just mentioned how Massachusetts has been a land of opportunity for me. There is no greater calling than to be able to go and serve the people of Massachusetts, to give back to a state that's given so much to me. Um, it's a little bit more of a sacrifice for our family, but it's a worthy sacrifice because we get the chance to send me out there to help the people of Massachusetts work on the important issues that we've been working on over the last you know, six plus years in this administration, three of which I've been here. It's been great. This is an honor. Um, you know, and I will gladly uh, put off my time in the private sector for this town. Sure. Senator, 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 uh, you've spent the past... Uh, great question. Uh, after I leave you kind folks today, I'm going to uh, have some conversations with members of uh, Secretary Kerry's staff. Uh, we'll be uh, working with them to talk about the schedules for D.C. Uh, and uh, probably in the next day or so, or perhaps early next week, we'll head down and get to work. Mr. Howard, how could you compare this to the day you got married and the day you got married? Um, Be careful. <laughs> well, I'll put it to you this way. The day I got married uh, was the day I realized I was the luckiest man in the world. The day our sons were born, I realized what true unconditional love meant. Today is a tremendous honor for me as a Massachusetts resident, a U.S. citizen, and my mother's son. The day I graduated from college was simply, whew. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, you've spent the past 
few years yeah. carrying out the governor's policy ideas, but now that you'll have your own voice, what issues and policies will you differ from, uh, with the governor on? Well, listen, uh, great question from my friend from Duke. Um, uh, I don't think we're going to differ all much at all. No. Listen, I'm going down in this temporary period to continue the good work that Senator Kerry and his team have been doing and work with the staff. Those are the issues that we've been working on here in the Patrick Murray administration all these years, the issues we talk about, deal with, and grapple every day. There's not going to be any daylight there at all because there's no need. And Senator Kerry has worked in close partnership with Governor Patrick, and so you can expect me to do the same. So what do you tell the voters of Massachusetts that you intend to keep the seat or you plan to leave your personal work as a senator before you move in June? I would tell the voters they should have confidence that every day I'm going to get up while I'm in this role to work on their behalf and the issues that's most important for them. And then the, the voters themselves will decide who takes this seat, keeps it, and does their work well, from June 26th. Well, what is your mission? Is it to view the mark, or is it to just make sure that everything flows as smoothly as it has been, or to continue what Senator Kerry has been doing? It's very much the latter. I want to do the work, continue the work that's been going, going on already. As I said, this is a temporary assignment. Uh, we're going to go down and work with Senator Kerry's team to keep this work going. It is the work that matters to Massachusetts. It is the work that we've been working on here. Uh, it's the work that I'm going to do. Senator, Senator what, 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 sir? have you been part of uh, putting together the list of possible replacements for John Kerry and calling through it before you rose to the top as a possible candidate? I think you indicated that in your remarks earlier. I just wanted to make sure I understand right. What role have you played in gathering the names of embedding possible replacements before you became one? I'm not even sure who else was on the list, except I know there are some dynamic folks, including the folks many of you reported on. And I'm just deeply honored that from that powerful list of people, the governor selected me. So Thank when you, you say 